Hello and welcome to another trip report and welcome to Wiener Hauptbahnhof, that's Vienna's main railway station. That is the train to Frankfurt, the railjet departing just beside me. I've not tried that yet, it's a lovely train, maybe one for a future trip report. What I'm here today to do is to take a sleeper train to Rome, the capital of Italy. That's going to be a fantastic journey. It's a wonderful, wonderful evening to be travelling. I'll be on the Austrian Railways night jet in a deluxe ensuite sleeper from Vienna to Rome. Going to be a great trip report. I love sleeper trains and I hope you do as well by the end of the video. Let's go check it out. Vienna's main railway station opened in 2012 and serves around 5.5 million passengers every year. It was basically designed from scratch and that means that all of the facilities it has are designed around the needs of the modern passenger. Night jet trains do not have a restaurant car and have only a limited selection of food for purchase on board, so I recommend you head down into the bowels of the station and buy yourself some dinner. If you prefer a good quality hot meal or just want to maximise sleep on the train, there are plenty of places you can get a good hot meal inside the station on the ground floor. Sleeper passengers can access the Austrian Railways Lounge, which is located upstairs on the gallery level. This is a pretty decent space. It's only a few years old, the same as the station, and has pretty much all of the amenities that you might expect to find in a decent airport business class lounge. This is much higher quality than most railway VIP lounges I've been in. You can grab yourself a half decent coffee, cake, fruit and of course charge your devices on the power sockets which are located throughout the lounge. One thing I should say though is that it does get quite busy in here. Around an hour before departure most of the seats were taken. So just waiting here on platform 8 here at Vienna's main railway station. Behind me is the Salzburg train as soon as that train's clear the platform I think mine is due to come in. Now, the train that I'm about to get is actually two trains in one. One portion will go on to Milan, and my portion, which I'll be in, will be going to Rome. I believe they split at Villach, um, which is near the border of Austria and Italy, at about midnight. Um, so I better make sure that I get in the right coach and in the right berth. It's all printed on my tickets, so it should be pretty straightforward. Okay, so now I've got to find my carriage. Not quite sure which one it is, but I think I'm probably going to be down the front of the train. I know that the cars at the back there go to Milan. So my guess is the uh, Rome portion is the front one. So I guess wrong. Got to go down the front of the train. As you get on board, you'll need to show your ticket and your proof of ID or passport to the steward, who will then grant you access. Here we are, safe and sound, berth number 32, room six, car 412, found it in the end. Absolute chaos uh, here. A lot of people didn't realize they need to look for the berth number, not the room number on their ticket. So yeah, anyway, it took about 10 minutes to get here. And so that's us having left Vienna main station in about 14 hours time. I'll have gone over the Alps and I'll be in Rome, one of the cradles of civilization. Going to be a cracking trip, I think. Wonderful weather for it. Couldn't have picked a better day. Going to be great. The train accelerates southeast down towards the Italian border. The first order of business is to look at the menu. Sleeper passengers are entitled to a complimentary six item breakfast. You can order more than six items, but this comes with an extra charge of one euro 20. If you're really in the mood for it, there's also a limited selection of hot food available on the menu, plus some hot drinks and wine. I'll leave a link to the full menu in the description text below. As far as freebies go, all of this was waiting for me at the table when I boarded, including a bottle of Prosecco. Be sure to fill out your breakfast form promptly, hand it to the sleeper car attendant when he comes round, and he'll also check your ticket to make sure you're in the right berth at the same time. As for me, I wasn't sure about the availability of food on board, so I brought my own dinner from one of the shops at Vienna Station. There are other ways of taking the night jet other than by getting a deluxe solo sleeper. I'll take a look at those in just a moment, but first, a room tour of my berth for the night. This is basically the whole sleeper cabin that I have to myself today. 
As you can see there are three seats here. Now there are actually three berths that could be made from this particular cabin. There's one here, one here and also one right at the top if you notice. There's some light controls there, air conditioning vents, nice big window and it does open which is an absolute boon in weather like this. Air conditioning and uh, I think that's the tannoy volume controls you can see there. Emergency brake, night lights. These here are to summon your cabin attendant, for example, if you need something in the middle of the night or you want to order some food. This down here is your bin, which looks empty and clean, that's good. Something which I almost missed and which the steward had to point out to me is that the only power socket is down here. Well, it's the only one apart from the one in the bathroom, which I'll show you shortly. Each of the berths does have replicated uh, controls, as you can see, but I've got the whole thing to myself tonight. This is a single deluxe. They actually don't sell all three berths as a deluxe. The maximum that you can have is two. I've got solar occupancy today. The other thing that we have is if I squeeze past this table down here, we have a pop-out seat, which I assume is gonna be useful if you want to get changed in the morning and a goodie bag. We will look at that in just a moment. Next up, the toilet and shower. The great thing about the Deluxe is that it has an ensuite, so you don't have to share this with anybody else. It is very small, but it does have a functioning shower. In fact, the shower head's down there. I don't know why I pointed my camera up there. Shower gel is provided, but I recommend that you bring your own wash basin clean toilet, everything that you'd really need um, from a small ensuite. If you've ever been on a sleeper train with one before, it's just like any other ensuite shower that you've seen. Or if you've taken an overnight ferry before, a lot of the bathrooms are small like this. Small, perfectly formed. Here's that other power socket that I was telling you about and also air conditioning. So that is pretty much it. And that's my home for the next 14 hours. The best thing, of course, about this room is the fact that you've got a window out into deepest Austria. In the morning that view is going to change and we'll be looking at the north of Italy. So other accommodations. You can travel in the seated coaches for the lowest possible price. However, this is not recommended. One, it's very uncomfortable and two, this train basically turns into a local commuter train once it comes into Italy and therefore you might be sharing your berth with some people on their way to work. A more solid budget option is the couchette. These are available on Nightjet in six and four berth varieties. You'll have to share with other passengers of the same sex and no bedding is provided. It's simply a flat surface for you to lay your head for the night. Nonetheless, for the price, it's a pretty good option on most European sleeper trains. If you're not traveling with an ensuite, then there is a communal shower and toilet located at the end of each carriage corridor. These are pretty clean and tidy and this is what they look like inside. Personally, I find having a shower before I'm able to step off the train is a fantastic amenity. Now, as I mentioned earlier, half of this train, the back half, is actually going to Milan. But don't worry, you can't access the wrong portion of the train by accident. It's all signed off and the doors are locked. Around an hour after leaving Vienna, we're in the Alpine foothills. And the scenery, as we approach Semmering, is quite spectacular. Okay, so let's have a look and see what we've got in our little goodie bag that was waiting for us when we arrived. So, slippers. That is, uh, what's that, it looks like a face towel. Pretzels, not sure I'm gonna be eating those. Another bottle of water. Uh, this is a refreshing towel, so uh, I'll use that before I go to sleep. And earplugs. Probably going to be using those tonight. Just one more thing in here, which is... Oh, it's just uh, a leaflet. 
You don't get a huge amount, it's not like a business class amenity kit, but it's definitely better than nothing, I think. At around midnight, the train enters Villach, the last stop in Austria. The Italian border is just a few miles away, and it's my cue to get some sleep. So here we go, this is the cabin in bed mode. As you can see, this bed has folded down from the wall and the seats have folded away. They're kind of just underneath, as you can see there. The attendant will do that for you. There's no reason for you to do it yourself. Although, if you really do have to do it yourself, it's pretty easy to figure out. The bed is in fact already made when it's uh, folded up into the wall there. All the uh, steward has to do is literally fold it down and out it pops ready made. Other thing is that that big table that you saw earlier has folded away up against the window. And that's it, that's my bed for the night. The next day I woke up at 7am to some fantastic morning sun as we passed through the north of Italy. The sleeper car attendant has also brought me some breakfast. You'll remember from earlier in the video I filled out a form and handed it to my sleeper car attendant the night before. Breakfast was absolutely fine, I mean it's nothing much to write home about but still it's breakfast and it will set you up at least until lunchtime. If you're interested to read more about the railjet, I've included two links for you in the description text below this video. The first is Austrian Railway's official night jet site, and the second is a blog, Rail Guide Europe, which is an authoritative and in-depth look at the night jet product, and I'm sure you'll enjoy reading it as much as I did. So my room is being turned back from bed mode into day mode, where they convert the seats back up. I've only got about half an hour to go now until Rome, so I'm just gonna sit here in one of the old couchettes and watch the world go by. Had my breakfast, had a shower, change of clothes, I feel fresh, great. We're gonna arrive in Rome just after 9 a.m. What more could you want? Welcome to Roma Termini Station in the heart of Rome. It's 9.25 a.m. The perfect time, if you ask me, to be arriving in Rome and cracking on and seeing some of the sights. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you might consider a sleeper car next time you look to travel around Europe. But until next time, see you around. <laughs>